Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 1 very chapter 2 verse 1 first chapter 2 and in verse 1 I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain upon table that he may run. That he may run. That he may run. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This evening the subject is supernatural speed part four. And we are dealing on vision and direction. Supernatural speed part four. Vision and direction. Our objective is to understand the place of vision and direction in supernatural speed. The place of vision and direction in supernatural speed. Our introduction, we're going to deal with this subject in two parts. First of all, we'll take vision and then take direction. Please don't assume that you know the terms. First of all, what is vision? In the simplest form, Vision is insight into God's purpose for one's life. Insight into God's purpose for your life. That's our only definition for tonight. Insight into God's purpose for your life. It is understanding that you are alive for a purpose. Understanding that you are not on the earth to live at random. It is understanding that you are on earth for a purpose. You are not on earth to live at random. Aligning yourself with that purpose, bring supernatural speed. I am alive for a purpose. I am not on earth by chance. I am not here to live at random. Knowing the purpose, aligning yourself with it, gives you speed in life. We have three examples. One, Abraham. Abraham's life shifted drastically, dramatically, and dimensionally after he encountered God. And he was, it was revealed to him the purpose for his life. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 all the way to verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. 
And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And in verse 5. And Abraham. Verse 4. And Abraham. So Abraham departed. His life shifted. Drastically. Dramatically. Dimensionally. The moment. He encountered the purpose of God for his life and aligned himself with that purpose. Just the next chapter, Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 2, and Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. His life was at the same spot for 75 years. On the same spot. In his father's house. Until he collided. With a vision for his life and death. And the difference between Abraham's life. And the lives of other members of his family. Became like the difference between the east and the west. That is in span. And what happened? He encountered purpose. And that purpose. Gave his life and gave his destiny speed. Example number two, Joseph. Joseph's life and that of his brethren became as different from each other's life as the difference between day and night. And what was responsible for that difference was vision. In Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 all the way to verse 9. We begin to, we begin, you'll begin to see the visions of Joseph. I'd like you to understand something however. The fact that you have a vision, though, does not mean that speed may happen immediately. So that you, you are not misunderstood. Or you don't misunderstand. It doesn't mean that speed may happen immediately because visions are for appointed times. Visions are for appointed times. Joseph got the vision. But the vision didn't give him speed immediately. In fact, it appeared as if the vision led him into trouble for 13 solid years. But when the appointed time for the fulfillment of the vision arrived, oh yeah, there was a supersonic speed, a supraoptic speed, a speed faster than the speed of the twister or the tornado. That under 24 hours, somebody who was just a prisoner became the prime minister of the whole nation at the frequency of the appointed time for the fulfillment of the vision. When the appointed time came, the difference between him and his other brethren became like the difference between day and night. In case you are saying, Pastor, but I, I know my purpose in life. Why is life still slow? Yes. Just hold on to that purpose. And just keep on doing what you need to do with that, with that purpose. And when the time for the fulfillment of vision appears, speed is not negotiable. That was Joseph. How vision gave him supernatural speed. Example number three was the example or is the example of Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle among other things was a man of vision. A man of vision. Who came to the point where he, he, he became far ahead of all the other apostles in every ramification. Ahead of all the other apostles in every ramification. In Acts chapter 26 verse 13. 
all the way to verse 16. Paul was speaking to King Agrippa. He said, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand up upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. We are upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Unto the heavenly vision. I collided with my purpose for life. And I applied myself to that purpose. I applied my life to that purpose. I applied my life to that purpose. And what was the result? The late comer that became the front liner. What was the result? All the other 11 apostles wrote half of the New Testament. Only him wrote the second half. What? is the outcome he planted more churches than in fact I, I don't know of any of the or any church that any of the other apostles planted if you heard of any new testament church in, in, in all probability paul planted them in the corinthians in the ephesians in the philippians only him crisscrossed asia minor over a thousand two hundred square miles horseback foot both sheep, keno, preaching the gospel from place to place. Paul the apostle. Handkerchief April left his body. What was his secret? Oh, King Gagripa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. You'll be saying to me, Pastor, but what are the other apostles? Didn't they have a purpose for their life? Are they not aware? Well, we are not sure of how serious they were with that purpose. We are not sure of how much they applied themselves. The brutal way in which Paul, the apostle, applied himself to that purpose. Beloved, vision, insight into God's purpose for your life, and applying yourself to that purpose puts you far ahead of your contemporaries. It gives you a speed. That will amaze everybody and amaze yourself. Now, how does vision bring about supernatural speed? Number one, vision naturally enhances motion and acceleration. It enhances motion and acceleration. That is on its own. On its own. Write the vision. Make it plain. Not that he may crawl. Not that he may walk. Make it plain that he may run. He may run. People of vision don't crawl. They don't walk. They run. That he may run. Listen to this. To see bright is to move fast and to see brighter is to move faster any day any time anywhere when you see bright you move fast when you see brighter you move faster that is the secret of the eagle eagle is the king the eagle is the king of the birds of everything that flies and is the fastest flying animal fastest flying bird 
And what is the secret of the eagle? Super sight. Super sight. The sight of the eagle, the pigment cells of the cornea of the eagle has eight times more concentrated cells than the eyes of a, of a man. So in the sky, the eagle can see almost a hundred miles in front. No wonder if you see the eye. Dangerous, brutal eye. One of the birds I like very well is the eagle. He likes to pick snakes from the ground. Big python, he will just come, pick it with his two legs, and fly to his mountain to pick it and eat. The snake will be dangling in the air, he's enjoying his flight. <laughs> he, he can pick lion, baby lion, middle, he can pick anything. And in fact, somebody said, if you are moving, just be looking up in case an eagle is passing. He's no respecter of him. Hallelujah. By the power of sight. By the power. Every time you see somebody moving very fast, he seems very clear. It's not luck. It's not chance. He is not in doubt of where he is going. He is not guessing. I heard God's servant Bishop Yedebo said, we are not surprised at where we are. We would have been surprised if we are not there. I heard Freddie Casey Price said, we have not succeeded by chance. How does vision bring about speed number two? Vision eliminates distraction. To life's journey. It eliminates distractions. In the journey of life. It eliminates distractions. Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 said. If your eye. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single. Thy whole body shall be full of light. If thy eye be single. Thy whole body shall be full of light. It gives you focus. Vision assists you. To channel your life's energy. And wisdom. And abilities. And resources. To what really matters to your destiny. Say that again. Vision. Gives you the capacity. To channel your life's energy. Your life's abilities, your life's wisdom, your life's resources to that which really matters to destiny. It helps you to narrow down your pursuit, narrow down your life's energy, your life's abilities, your life's wisdom, your life's resources to that which matters to destiny. And so you are free from the distractions of the distracted. And so, speed becomes inevitable. Other people are, are, are pulled in so many directions. Nothing gets achieved. But when you are able to understand where to narrow down your energy, <clears throat> where to channel your resources, your speed becomes incontestable. Thirdly, vision brings both Provision and providence. It brings you both provision and providence. It gives you both the resources you need and the opportunities you need. Vision. That gives you speed. First Samuel chapter 17. David had the vision put in his heart to bring down Goliath. And that vision brought the provision. In 1 Samuel 17, 40, the stones he needed to bring down that giant, to fulfill that vision, he located it in the brook nearby. Where that stone was to walk, that forehead, he located it as well. He got the provision, he got the opportunity, and the vision was fulfilled. It was fulfilled. You know, when you have the means, you reach the end. When you have the means, you easily reach the end. 
When you have the means, it becomes easy to reach the end. There are many who have dropped out of school because of no means. There are very many big mega visions that couldn't be fulfilled for lack of means. But when you have the means, you reach the end. And you don't just reach the end, you reach the end on time. And that's what the vision does for you. It pulls in your direction the provision and the providence. Somebody say amen. Finally, how does vision give acceleration? Fourthly, vision review imparts fire and passion for motion. Vision review imparts fire and passion for motion. You say, write a vision. Make it plain on tables that he may run that read at it. When every time vision is revealed, passion is rekindled, and motion is released. Every time vision is revealed, passion is rekindled, and motion is released. Every time vision is revised, Passion is rekindled and motion is released. That is the tragedy of the empty heart. When the heart is empty, life is stagnant. When the heart is empty, the future is not in view. Hallelujah. So, vision is very, very critical. And this fourth point, is showing us that it is not enough to have vision. It is important to review the vision. Hallelujah. How do you achieve vision? How do you achieve vision? Number one, by the desperate desire to know the will, plan, and purpose of God for your life. By the desperate desire to know the will, the plan, and the purpose of God for your life. It is the refusal to live by assumption. The refusal to live by assumption. The refusal to live life at random. The refusal to live life to chance. The refusal. The refusal to gamble with your life. To gamble with your life. The refusal. Very, very desperate. I was a very, very desperate young man. I'm still very desperate. Very desperate. <laughs> one day in the year of 1986, that will be like 34 years ago, one of my friends looked at me. He said, what is written all over you is desire. Just all over you, all I see is desire, desperation. That is your desperation in motion. Lord, I can't afford to miss you. What is the use living if I miss your plan? What is the use living if the purpose why I'm alive is not fulfilled? What is the use of a journey whose destination is not known? Why do I enter a vehicle and I'm not, I don't know where I'm going? That desperation. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 said, Then shall we know if we follow on to know. That desperation. That Paul the apostle expressed in Philippians chapter 3 and in verse 10 all the way to verse 14. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. It is not because I have already attained. Not that I am already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God 
in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. Desperate, desperate pressure. That's the first. God won't bother you with what does not bother you. Whatever is not your interest cannot be your insight. Very, very important. That is number one. Number two, by the willingness to do God's will and plan for your life. How do you arrive at vision? By the willingness to do God's will and plan for your life. God won't show you what you will not do. <laughs> he won't give you a vision that will not be backed with action. As many as are led, by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. They are the sons of God. God will only lead those who are in the position to be led. And someone said it is easy to know God's will. When you don't have a choice in the matter. Your choice is my choice. Let me want what you want. Oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love. That is how you design life to be love. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no will that is separate from your will. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no choice that is separate from your choice. To be lost in you is my desire. To be all for you is all I want. Because of time, I'm going to rush. Maybe I'll sing it later. The willingness to do his will. I read Romans 8, 14. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Jesus is saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I am not asking for you to do what I want. I want you to do what you want. Not what I want, but what you want. Very, very important. The willingness to do God's will and plan for your life. There can be no two wills in one person. Not the will of God and the will of man. Is either the will of man completely or the will of God completely? Lord, let it be your will. That's the second way. And as I speak right now, you can adjust your way. You can increase your desperation and you can surrender your will because you are sure that God will never give you what is bad for you. Finally, by the act of persistence at the place of prayer, by standing strong at the prayer tower, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, I will Stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I am watching to see. By the act of persistence, I will stand. Not I will visit. I will stand there. Until I receive what is showing me, I am not shifting anywhere standing strong at the place of prayer to take delivery of his will, of his plan and of his purpose for your life. You are not giving up and you are not settling for an alternative. If God does not show me what his purpose is for me now, what do I do? I will look into the scripture and, 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 and find out what, to, what the word tells me to do in areas of obedience and I will be in the line of that obedience and then he will speak to me that is vision that is vision I speak to somebody's life today and I declare anything that has blocked your sight 
and blocked your hearing and blocked your knowing and blocked your understanding and blocked your revelation i declare it broken right now in the name of jesus command your sight to open in jesus name please be seated everywhere now we are looking we have seen vision which is insight into god's purpose what about direction direction Please, I'd like you to pay attention. The Oxford Dictionary defines direction in two ways. Then I will give a third definition that is mine. It says, direction is a course. C-O-U-R-S-E. A course along which someone or something moves. A course along which someone or something moves. What is direction? Number two. The dictionary again said, direction is the course which must be taken in order to reach a destination. This is pure English dictionary definition. A course, the course which must be taken in order to reach a destination. Vision is showing me where to go. Direction is showing me how to get there. And my definition says, direction is guidance on the way to go and how to live in order to fulfill purpose. The way to go, how to live. In order to fulfill purpose. That is day-to-day -day guidance. Day-to-day -day guidance. Many people claim to have vision, but they lack direction. So frustration is inevitable. Vision without direction equals frustration. Vision minus direction equals frustration. Another one. Vision minus direction equals stagnation. Equals stagnation. It equals stagnation. Do we have examples of people who had direction? Yes. One, Isaac in the land of the Philistines, he had direction. And that direction gave him acceleration. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine. That was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Remain in this land or in the land I will tell you of. Remain in this land. I will be with you. I will bless you. For unto you and to your seed, I will give these countries. And I will perform the oath. Which I swear unto Abraham your father. Now you jump to verse 14. Verse 12. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And received in the same year. A hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. 
And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Read that verse 13 again. The man was great, went forward, speed, grew until he became very great. You can stop there. One direction, one direction, one direction, one direction. Isaac, I know you are in my purpose, but you are about to make a move that is not right. He didn't say anything. God saw his heart. Go not down to Egypt. Probably he was contemplating moving to Egypt. Or maybe he saw that everybody moved. I'm about to say some things now. The fact that you got British passport does not mean God wants to leave you in God wants you to live in the UK. The fact that everybody is rushing to Canada does not mean that God wants you to rush there. Hmm. Green card does not mean green light. Many people are stranded in life because of lack of direction. They made moves, took steps that had no God in. Somebody say, but that, that man is, 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 is now in full-time ministry. I, I, when we were on campus, I, was on more, I had more fire than him. In the church, I had more passion than him. In fact, I want more souls. If he can be a pastor, I can be a pastor. Not be so. Not be so. It's not of him that will it or run it. But it's of God who showed mercy. The race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. Riches is not for men of, of understanding. And favor is not for the skillful. It's a time and chance. Happen it to all. Hallelujah. Direction. And as he had that direction and remained in that land where God spoke to him about, he saw speed like never before. Hey, you are saying I already made a move that doesn't look like God moved me. This is the point. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in the wrong direction. A U-turn is possible when you realize. Maybe it's a relationship that is leading on to marriage. As, as far as you have not yet married, a U-turn is possible. It's only when you have married that you are in a fixed deposit. That was Isaac. What of our master Jesus? Our master Jesus is our example number two here. Jesus saw incredible speed. Incredible speed in ministry. He achieved in three and a half years. An assignment that spanned eternity. Three and a half years. What was his secret? Direction. John chapter 5 verse 30. John 5 and in verse 30 he said, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I'm not, I don't do things anyhow. I hear before I do. No wonder. Read verse 19 and verse 20 there. Verse 19 and in verse 20. He said, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. For the father loved the son and showed him all the things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. Direction. Jesus went to the temple and taught in the temple for three and a half years. And left a crippled man at the gate. 
He was crucified. He resurrected. He went to heaven. Not that he doesn't have the anointing to raise cripple, but he didn't hear that he should lay hands on that man. He passed and left. The miracle was performed by Peter. <laughs> In John chapter 5, he went to the pool of Siloam, uh, Bethesda. The Bible said there are many important folks there. Instead of saying, all of you rise up and move, he went straight to one man because that is what he heard. That one has been there for 38 years. He went straight to one man, only one man. Healed that one and left. We will want to heal everybody. Uh, want to show power. And the power of God can do it. Why not? God can do it. <laughs> he had 100% success rate. 100%. There was not one person he prayed for who wasn't healed. Because he was prayed as he was led. There are times when everybody was healed because that was what he had. That's why at the wedding in Cana, he told his mother, my hour has not come. Even though I'm seated here, yet from my last discussion with my father, it's not yet time for miracle. And when the father saw the persistence of Mary, he looked to me like he gave him a signal to go ahead. That was the reason for the achievements of our master Jesus. Speed is coming for somebody. Speed is coming for somebody. In the name of Jesus. Speed is coming. He didn't waste his time with everything. He didn't waste his life with any, every possibility. He was strategically guided. <laughs> Today we pray for anybody we see. Why not? Because the people will say, oh, um, he hates me. That's why he didn't branch to touch me. <laughs> we, we try our best and leave the results in his hands. But that was how the master moved. What is the role of direction in supernatural speed? I'm going to be fast because our time is almost up. Number one, God's voice of direction carries power to propel motion. God's voice of direction carries power to propel motion. In Psalm 29 verse 4, he said, the voice of the Lord is powerful, powerful. Whenever God speaks, power just arrived. And in physics, we were told that power is the capacity to do work. And we're also told that work is said to be done when an object is moved through a distance in the direction of the force. The meaning of that is, when power arrives, work is done. And when work is done, motion happens. So the power of God makes something to move. And the voice of God comes with power. If God speaks to you to build for him, a 10,000 seat sanctuary, 100,000, a, a million, whatever. Power to make it happen with speed comes with it. Number two, God's voice of direction clears off oppositions and resistance in life's journey. It clears them off. God's voice of direction clears off oppositions and resistance to life's journey. We read that, this passage all the time in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 31. He said, through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be, be beaten down which smote with a rod. Through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. Through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down which smote with a rod. When God speaks, whatever is trying to block you from reaching where God says you should go, they are cleared from the way. God's voice of direction clears oppositions and resistance to life's journey. One thing you are going to ask God tonight, speak and let me hear. Any language I understand, speak to me. Communicate to me how I will understand. God's voice of direction. Number three, God's voice of direction 
orchestrates life's events. Orchestrates life's events in the direction of God's purpose. God's voice of direction orchestrates life's events. In the direction of God's purpose. That is, when God speaks, everything lines up. Everything lines up. Everything lines up. In Luke chapter 5 and in verse 4 to 5, he spoke to Peter and the fishes lined up. When God speaks, everything lines up. Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Everything lines up. When God speaks, everything lines up with God's purpose. So speed is effortless. Finally, God's voice of direction averts unnecessary delays and detours on life's journey the voice of direction it averts it prevents unnecessary delays and unnecessary detours in your life's journey you are delayed when you don't know which direction to move you can branch the wrong way when you don't know which way to go and that delays your speed that forbids your speed. But God's voice of direction assists you to have escaped delays, assists you to escape the unnecessary missing of road. Pardon me, the use of the word unnecessary message of road. Genesis 26 verse 1 to 4. God's voice prevented Isaac from taking a journey that was not necessary. It prevented him from taking a journey that was not necessary. Beloved, what is, a, what is the use? Listen, what is the use of arriving on time at a destination that was not necessary at all? What is the use? You arrived on time at the place where you were not meant to go at all. It's of no, speed is a waste. Where direction is wrong. Haste is useless. Where destination is wrong. God's voice of direction. There are many who one good their way into this and stepped into this relationship, came out, went into another, came out, tried this business, came out and tried another and came out and just tried, went to this country, came out and tried to live in another. All oh, manner. Don't waste. You have just one lifetime. Don't waste it like that. Hallelujah. That is God's voice of direction. Very, very important. Finally, how do you arrive at direction? Again, number one, true desperate inquiry at the place of prayer. Desperate. Lord, I'm about to make this move. Are you in need? I'm about to take this journey. Are you going? I'm sure you remember what we said the last time. When the disciples took a journey and the master wasn't there. <clears throat> it was frustration. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. He said, stand in the ways. And see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. You shall find rest. Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3, ask of me, call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Enquiry. Anytime you are afraid of asking God whether you are doing his will, it's likely you are about to miss it. Because when somebody is doing a fraudulent business, he doesn't want to ask God whether this is of, whether, God, is this of you? When somebody is about to miss it, relationship or other things. He does, he's afraid to ask God. 
You see, but if you, if you, if you know that God has the best of your interest at heart, you can ask him anything. True inquiry. Number two is true sensitivity in the spirit by maintaining a listening ear and a hearing eye. Sorry, a listening ear and a seeing eye. Sensitivity in the spirit by maintaining a listening ear and a, and a seeing eye. That is leaving nothing to assumption. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says, I will, I will watch to see. I will watch to see. I'm watching to see. Psalm 89 verse 5 says, I will hear, I will hear, I will hear what the Lord will say. 85 verse 8, I will hear what the Lord will say. I will hear, I will hear. God is speaking most of the times. In fact, all the times. Because he said, let him that have ears hear what the Spirit said. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded, proceeded, proceeded. John chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, proceeded. All of a sudden, you are feeling uneasy about something or about somebody. All of a sudden, you are feeling tensed up about something. You don't, you don't brush it aside. You are sensitive. You, you press further to know if God is trying to say something. Lord, are you trying to say something through that dream I dreamt last night and I have not understood? Make it clear. Sensitivity in the spirit. By maintaining a listening ear and a seeing eye. Or in fact, asking God, Lord, speak to me in the language I can understand. And finally, through the maintenance of the climate of gratitude and worship. When people are ungrateful, unthankful, bitter, and grumbleful, they will never access the voice of God. Murmuring, unhappiness. You say with joy you draw water, you draw inspiration. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3, you draw inspiration from the wells of salvation. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Acts 13 verse 2. Yes, you shall have a song. Like when holy solemnity is kept. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 29 and 30. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. But even when you are not trying to hear something. Maintaining the climate puts you in the mood. In the mode of receiving. Mode. Of receiving not just the mood the mode of receiving of receiving thank you master my prayer tonight is that your life's purpose will be clearer to you and my prayer tonight is that you will not waste your life by missing direction that direction will be clear so that acceleration can be sure